Hey everybody, Nate here from WASD20. Welcome back. This is D&D Short Swords. This is a series where I give you short, sharp, and pointed tips and inspiration for your tabletop role-playing games uh, for both DMs and players. Uh, it's a series where I just try to be brief and I don't edit too much, so excuse all the coughs and ums and stuff. And uh, we're just going to plow through here. But today's topic is the one that I, I think is a really good question from a viewer. And I'll read the question here. <laughs> This is from, we'll call this person Jay, because I can't pronounce the name. Jay says, hello, I have a question. I am about to run a game for a bunch of friends, none of whom are actually that invested in fantasy, and they just come up with the most ridiculous and inappropriate, often modern world characters. How do I invest them? Solid question. I think it's a really common question. I know that I have dealt with this as a dungeon master before, and I'm sure many of you out there have. And it kind of gets at a broader issue here. When you as a DM has a, have a specific style or tone in mind for a game, uh, and your players just don't seem to be buying into that. Uh, so there are a couple, I guess, two reasons I can think of. One is that the expectations are not clear. The, um, the goal is not made clear to the players. And the second is that the goal is clear and they just, it doesn't jive with them. They're just not feeling it right? So in the case of a new player, new group, I would imagine they might not understand that for you, Jay, uh, tabletop role-playing games can be a very serious thing um, and can really be deep and meaningful because of that. That's not to say that having a good time and just kind of getting together for some laughs can't be deep and meaningful because depending on your life, that might be one of the more meaningful times of your week or your month, getting together with your friends and just sharing some laughs. But there is that matter of style and maybe some incompatibility here. So the first thing I would say, I guess, is perhaps uh, you try to play the way they want to play. And maybe you find that when you're not going against the grain and you actually meet them where they are, you might actually have fun. But maybe you won't. Maybe that's just not what you're after. I don't think you'll know till you try, so try. But it's very likely that that's just not what you're after. And I understand that. That's not your preferred style. That's not the tone that you're going for. I think another uh, common issue that a lot of Dungeon Masters have is, you know, I really like to role play, and my players just don't get into character. That one's a little bit easier to solve, I think. That one's easier for me to deal with as a DM. I'm okay if my players aren't getting into character all that much. It happens a lot, and it's fine. But when you have built a world, NPCs, storylines, a tone that you really like, and your players don't seem to be respecting that, that doesn't feel so good. When they're tinkering with it, they're coming to the table just thinking, ooh, let's try this. Oh, what would happen if we did this? And, and it's just all about laughs, right? And all about having a good time. Again, nothing wrong with that, but there is something wrong when you're not having fun as a dungeon master. And so it might be worth just making that expectation clear and just kind of laying it out there for them. And you can do that very gently. You can just say, well, okay, after looking at your characters, these are cool. Uh, these could work, but I'm kind of going for a more serious tone in my game. And you can even use a reference. I'm going for kind of a Lord of the Rings feel here, or The Witcher. Or if they're not into fantasy, maybe you use uh, something that's not fantasy with a little bit more of a serious tone. And just kind of ask them to buy into that. Say, here's what I'm going for. Um, here's the world and the tone that I'm going for. Uh, so maybe you could try to change your characters a bit to be a little more consistent with that. Uh, while still playing a character that you want to play, right? Uh, if they want to play a wisecracker, um, that, is, that, is that term offensive? Why, <laughs> I think that's the wrong word. If they want to play someone who wisecracks, ah, if they want to play someone who cracks wise, there we go. <laughs> um, they can do that, and that can have a place in a more serious setting. But I get the feeling it's not the characters that are cracking wise here, it's the players, and they're just fooling around a lot. So anyway, the idea is that you can still try to find things that they can latch on to, uh, things that they would appreciate, and it might involve some baby steps toward the eventual place where you would like the game to be. But I think you got to invite them in, and you got to make that expectation clear. This is what I'm going for. Um, could you maybe, could we maybe change this? Could we maybe do away with some of this behavior and try to get to 
a little closer to here, right? And I think that's worth going for, worth asking. So try playing their style or invite them into your style gently and with baby steps. And if they're still not going for it, at the end of the day, it might not work out. Uh, Matt Colville has a really good video on different styles of play, different types of players, I think it is. I think it's running the game number 11. I'll put a link in the description below or to be in the spirit of Matt Colville. I'll put a link in the doobly-doo below. If you go check out the video, tell him I sent you. And um, it's a really great video. He goes through all the styles. And at the end, he does say this, and I think it's very true. It's not your fault, necessarily, if it doesn't work out in the end. If you find that we're just not compatible, it's not working out, that's not necessarily anyone's fault. It's just different styles not getting together. Um, the idea that any group of players should be able to get along and have a great time at the table, it's just not true. Uh, that's just not the way it works. So you might have to resign yourself to that. And that can be disappointing. I have dealt with that myself. I've dealt with that disappointment where I was very new to it. I introduced tabletop role-playing games to some friends and all of them were new to it as well. And we played a couple times, I think three or four times. And I had fun and they had fun, I think. And at the end of the day, <coughs> excuse me, we just got to a point where I think they weren't feeling it. I think they just thought, you know what? It's a little too distracting with kids running around. And, you know, I totally understand that. And it, at, at our stage in life, it's just not what we can do. We can't commit to this. And, um, you know, maybe we could just get together and play some board games. Or, you know, maybe every other time, play a board game. Uh, and I, I got to that point and realized, okay, I'm. this is not the, the, the dream group that I was going for. They're still good friends. Uh, I still see them and hang out. And I think possibly it could be a group where we occasionally play a one-shot. And that's another thing, you know, you could do that. You could have your serious group where you really, you know, have a, t a dark, heavy tone that's, um, you know, really what you're going for. And then you could occasionally run a one-shot for these friends and just have some fun together. That's another option. So anyway, I hope you've gotten something out of this, guys. If you have any comments for Jay, put those down below in the comments. He needs to hear from you as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And that's all. Everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.